Rekahu is a um, Maori name for Chathams. Group of rocks in the middle of nowhere, basically, 45 minutes ahead of the, the mainland, so first place in the world to see the sun. It's something that gets into your blood here. You want to try and protect it. And you realise how lucky we are to live here. The weather rules your life down here. Whether you're outside working, whether you're inside working, whether you're going fishing, whether you're not, whether you're shipping livestock, whether you're not, whether you're going to Pit Island on an aeroplane, whether you're not. The seabird life is just stupendous. It's what New Zealand should have looked like in the past with the amount of birds coming in at night. Everywhere you look when you live on the Chathams or Pit Island, it's natural. We've got a pretty unique, special place here. My family go back to the first people here and this land's been handed down over the generations. As I've got older, I've sort of got more in tune with the nature of the land, the birds, the sea, and um, I want to do the best for the birds um, at sea anyway. There's a lot of them there and we're taking a lot of fish out and, it's, and I'm, I'm concerned. The islands that our birds are breeding on, the albatross and the mollyhawks and the giant petrels, we're the caretakers, so it's important for the island, for the future of my kids, my children. The generations today are recognising how much devastation has been caused by the pests and predators. And if we pick it up as, you know, the Chatham Island people, we will succeed uh, to actually taking control of our own destiny and getting rid of these predators that have been introduced. We're lucky not to have any mustelids. Probably the reason that some of our endemic species that are still holding on here are actually still here today. The feral cat problem's pretty big. They're, they're kind of the apex predator over here. We've got all three species of rat, then we've got the possum, which is probably the most devastating for our actual forest. They get in and destroy the canopy and an isolated island like this, the wind whips in and yeah, then the damage just uh, extrapolates out from there. The vision, in, in my own words, is to restore the Chathams as it was. Um, you know, bring back the bird song. Predator Free 2050 Limited, you know, they've, they've come in and sort of, I suppose, given the, the pest free conservation of the Chathams a bit of a kickstart. Um, you know, obviously there's some funding around that's gone towards projects, but also um, with the employment of an of a island-based person. Our island, the shape of it, yeah, we've got a lot of natural barriers that can help with, um, help with an eradication. You know, we've got the, the lagoon, the ocean, the lagoon mouth, um, a string of lakes, small peninsulas, narrow, narrow barriers to defend, um, and then we've got 800 kilometres of ocean separating us from the mainland. Um, so yeah, with a decent biosecurity strategy um, and staying, I guess, staying vigilant and um, keeping the monitoring up, then it's, uh, it seems achievable. I can see light at the end of the tunnel. It can take a long time to make a large project like this come to fruition. But the exciting part is they're moving forward. Um, they've done their initial feasibility study, they've started the operational planning for the first phase, and they're actually about to start installing the first devices in the field, which will be the backbone for the elimination within the first area of the project. The wider community is very connected to the land. It's a lot of the community is already working in restoration projects, whether it's habitat restoration, some species protection, and also the community is doing translocations of seabirds back to where they should be. It'll be an absolute magic place when this happens. The Chathams at the moment, there's, there's a lot going on. From one end to the other, there's, there's little projects that um, just need, need a guiding hand or, or some support. And tying them all together is going to only make them more successful. We've now got six kilometres fenced off. Um, we can keep the stock off and we can let the natural bush regenerate itself. Yeah, we just hope that we can build up the forest and get the forest back and going and, uh, and it'll encourage the bird's life to come back again and, and stay here, hopefully. 
we were making the traps so then we can catch the pests so then the birds can live. It's important to help out these birds so then the future generation can see all the birds, see how cool they are. I think it's changing, definitely for the better, and I think that's because of the predator control, um, without a shadow of a doubt. Native bush and predators have always been a big part of our, our life. There's no reason why we can't be predator free. The bird life here would be phenomenal. They were here before us, you know. Remember, we're the fellas that have done this to them. We're the fellas who have um, ruined where their habitat is. So, yeah, we're kind of answerable to that, aren't we? Well, we are answerable to that. And therefore, we need to restore a lot of, yeah, a lot of areas. We're originally a seabird-driven ecosystem, and I guess a lot of our flora species rely on the nutrients that they bring back to the island. So, seeing the seabirds just returning um, to our whenua, yeah, the sky just sort of filled with them, um, that would be a pretty special moment for me, I think.